Hello everyone, today I'm going to be unboxing and having a first look at the Dyson V7 Motorhead Cordless Vacuum Cleaner. Now of course Dyson have just launched the V10 which is the cleaner that everyone seems to want but they still produce their V6, V7 and V8 models so I thought I'd show you this V7 before eventually I get a V10. Dyson claim up to 30 minutes of fade free suction and this model also includes the hygienic dirt ejector something that the V6 models lack. Okay let's open it. Quite a lot to unbox so I'll take all the component parts out and we'll have a look at this cleaner. There are several different models in the V7 range but they only differ according to the number of tools provided. So this is the V7 motorhead. So apart from the main unit you get the motorhead itself that's suitable for carpets and hard floors. You get the combination brush which is a dusting brush when you pull out the brush here and it's also a general nozzle for your upholstery. You get the crevice tool, of course you get the extension wand and you get the wall mounted charger and mains adapter. According to the sticker on the machine it has a 20% charge but you will need to charge it fully before first use and it could take up to three and a half hours. The sticker here highlights the two position switch. When you first unbox your Dyson V7 it will be in the max suction mode which will give you up to six minutes of power using the motorized tool. If you want up to 30 minutes of power flick the switch to high suction extended run and you'll get up to 30 minutes but only when using the straight suction tools. When you add the motorized tools you will get less run time. The third sticker highlights the hygienic dirt disposal. Unlike the V6 range, the V7, V8 and the new V10 all have a self-cleaning shroud. So to empty the cleaner you pull up on this lever here and the whole cyclone assembly raises up and a silicon ring cleans this mesh screen here of any debris. So that was a problem with the earlier models, the V6 models, often hairs, especially pet hairs and other debris used to get trapped around the middle mesh screen and it was rather awkward to clean. But now as it raises up it cleans itself and obviously the bin opens and the dirt falls into the bin. Once you've emptied the bin simply push down on the top of the cyclone unit and close the flap. The only maintenance you should need to perform on the cleaner itself is making sure you empty it before it reaches the max fill line and washing the filter once a month. Now this filter will look clean even after several months of use but a lot of the dirt will be on the inside of this filter so Dyson recommend you wash it at least once a month in running water or you can submerge it in water, give it a shake, squeeze it out, keep rinsing it until the water turns clear, obviously make sure it's 100% dry and then you can pop it back in your cleaner. This Dyson V7 uses the later click fit tools so if you've got a V6 or an older Dyson cordless say a DC35 the tools won't fit it. You can fit the tools directly to the machine itself like this so that's the crevice tool and of course we've got the combination tool. You can also fit the motor head directly to the unit so you can use that on your stairs and of course you can fit the motor head to the end of the wand and any of the other cleaning tools. So if you want to reach up high for those cobwebs you can just attach one of the nozzles and do your high level cleaning. Dyson claim that this motor head has 75% more brush bar power than the previous V6 model so it should get deeper into your carpets. Now it's also suitable for hard floors because as well as these stiff nylon brushes it also incorporates the black carbon fibre brushes which are much softer and they're designed to clean your hard floors more effectively especially the fine dust and dirt. The Dyson V7 comes with a wall mounted charging bracket that also stores the two small tools. Now if you don't want to put the machine on the wall you can charge it directly using the mains charger. So basically you can plug directly into the cleaner here. There's this little socket at the back and then of course plug the adapter into the wall socket so you can have this on your kitchen worktop charging or next to a convenient power point. When the cleaner is charging you'll see a solid blue light. When it's fully charged the light goes out. 
Okay, I fully charged my Dyson V7 and I've set a little test for it on this rug. So I've put down some rolled oats, loose leaf tea, flour and rice. So lots of different sized particles for the cleaner to cope with. And I'm going to try and pick up some of this anyway on the regular setting, not on maximum. This is just on the regular setting. So we'll go forward and back through the middle and uh, have a look at the results. Well, that's not a bad result for two passes on the regular setting. It's picked up nearly everything, a few odd bits here and there, but that's pretty impressive. That would be quite impressive for a mains powered vacuum, but it's very impressive for a cordless. Okay, I'm going to clean another path, but this time I'm going to use the max setting. Well, there's not a lot in it, to be honest. I would say the max setting has done very slightly better but probably for everyday cleaning, you'll be fine on normal setting. Obviously, when used on max, I think it only has a six minute runtime when using the motorized head. So you'll get a slightly, very slightly better clean, but of course at the expense of a much shorter runtime. Well, as you can see, the Dyson V7 is nearly at its max fill line, so I'll have to empty it before cleaning up the rest of this mess. But I think there's still enough room in the bin to clean up this area, but this time we're going to try suction only using the combi tool. And again, I'm going to start off on the regular setting. more or less picked everything up. I could get every little particle if I was to go over it a couple of more times, but fine. And now we'll boost the power. Now switched it onto max. That's regular and that's max. So let's just pick up the rest of this here. Yeah, it's definitely got more oomph on max. But as I said, you'll be better off probably for most jobs around the house. The regular setting will be more than adequate. Well, as you can see, I'm up to the max fill line now. So I better empty this V7. We'll see if the emptying system is a lot cleaner than the V6 model. Apart from the dirt that I actually put down, you can see if I can hold it to the light, there's actually some hairs and fibers in there that I didn't put down. So that's some hairs for my dog, I expect but that's picked it up as well as all the dirt I put down on the rug. Normally, of course, you'd empty the cleaner over a bin, but uh, for this video, I'm just going to empty it back onto the rug. And to empty it, we just have to pull up this little switch here, this little lever with the bin symbol on. That will raise the cyclone, hopefully cleaning off anything on the shroud. There doesn't seem to be much on the shroud at the moment. And then all the debris will fall out. So there we go. Let's look at the shroud. Yep, that's clean. And the bin is fully emptied. So even with pet hair, I expect if that gets wrapped around here, it should leave it clean. So then to close it, we just push down on the cyclone and then close the bottom of the bin. Well, that's about the end of my unboxing and brief demonstration of the Dyson V7 Motorhead Vacuum Cleaner. Now, looking at Dyson's current UK website, it seems that they've dropped the V6 range 
and now the V7 is the entry level Dyson cordless stick. So currently there are the V7s, the V8s and the brand new V10. I'll certainly be looking at this cleaner in a bit more detail later on and I'll also be unboxing and demonstrating a V8. I might consider a V10 but there's so many videos on YouTube of the V10 I don't know if I'll bother at the moment. I might wait until I can get one at a discount. So all in all, I would recommend the V7. It's certainly an improvement on the V6 range, especially with the cleaner bin emptying. Nothing seems to get wrapped around the shroud, or if it does, it is removed every time you empty the bin. And the performance, certainly on carpets, is pretty impressive. And I suspect that the performance on hard floors will be equally good. If you have any comments or questions about this machine or any Dyson cordless, I'll try and help you if I can. Don't forget to subscribe, thumb up, click the bell icon and you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. So until the next time, that's it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye for now.